At the World Chess Championship 1963 Tigran Petrosian narrowly qualified to challenge Mikhail Botvinnik for the World Chess Championship, and then won the match to become the ninth World Chess Champion. The cycle is particularly remembered for the controversy surrounding the candidates' tournament at Curaçao in 1962, which resulted in FIDE changing the format of the candidates' tournament to a series of knockout matches. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Structure The World Championship cycle was under the jurisdiction of FIDE, the World Chess Federation, which set the structure for the fifth World Championship series at the 1959 FIDE Congress in Luxembourg. The cycle began with the zonal tournaments of 1960. The top finishers in the zonals met at the interzonal, with the top six players from the interzonal qualifying for the candidates' tournament. They were then joined by Mikhail Tal, loser of the last World Championship match in 1961, and Paul Kerry's runner-up at the 1959 candidates in the eight-player candidates' tournament in 1962. The winner of the candidates would qualify to play a world championship match against Mikhail Botvinnik, the incumbent champion, in 1963. <laughs> <laughs> Zonal tournaments FIDE now had more than 50 member federations that were divided into nine zones, one Western Europe, two Central Europe, three Eastern Europe, four USSR, five USA, six Canada, seven Central America, eight South America, and nine Asia. Previous championship cycles had used only eight zones. Each zone was allocated from one to four qualifiers based on the relative strengths of its leading players. Topic: <laughs> Zone 1, Western Europe. The zonal was held at Madrid with Jan Hein Donner, Netherlands, Svetozar Gligoric, Yugoslavia, Arturo Poma, Spain, and Leos Portish, Hungary, in a four-way tie for first place with 10 and a half, 15. A Madrid playoff qualified Gligoric, Poma, and Portish. Topic Zone 2 Central Europe The zonal was allocated to Berg en Dal, Netherlands. Due to Cold War political tension, Wolfgang Ullmann East Germany was refused a visa, causing the players from Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland, and Yugoslavia to withdraw. The winners of the diminished tournament were Fririk Olafsson Iceland, first with seven and a half, nine, and Andreas Duckstein, Austria, and Rudolf Teschner, West Germany, tied for second with seven. The zonal tournament was replayed in the summer of 1961 at Maranske Lozna, Czechoslovakia, with Olafsson, Miroslav Filip, Czechoslovakia, and Ullmann qualifying. At its 1961 Congress at Sofia, FIDE decided that Duckstein and Teschner would be allowed to play a match for a place in the interzonal. With the match tied 3-3, Duckstein withdrew giving the final qualifying spot to Teschner. <laughs> Zone 3 Eastern Europe 
The zonal was held in Budapest, with Gedeon Barkza Hungary finishing first with 10 and a half, 15, followed by Mario Bertok Yugoslavia, Istvan Belek Hungary, Alexander Matanovic Yugoslavia, and Theo van Scheltinger tied for second at 10. A playoff between the second place finishers at Berg and Dal ended with Belek three and a half, Bertok and Matanovic three, von Scheltinger two and a half. An artificial tie break selected Bertok over Matanovic, resulting in Barkza, Belek, and Bertok qualifying for the interzonal. Topic Zone Four USSR. Even though FIDE allocated the USSR four qualifying spots, Zone Four was the hardest zone from which to qualify. An early 1961 USSR championship was held as the zonal tournament. Tigran Petrosian won the championship with 13 and a half, 19, and the remaining qualifiers were Victor Korchnoi with 13 and Efim Geller and Leonid Stein with 12. Notable players who failed to qualify from this zone were former world champion Vasily Smyslov at 11, former world champion challenger David Bronstein at 9, and former candidates Boris Spassky at 11, Yuri Averbach at 10.5, Mark Taimanov at 10, and Isaac Bolslavsky at 9. The USSR Federation tried unsuccessfully at the 1961 FIDE Congress to get Smyslov seeded into the interzonal. <laughs> Zone 5 USA. The United States Chess Federation designated the 1960 U.S. Championship as the zonal tournament. Top finishers in the championship were Bobby Fischer with 9-11, William Lombardy with 7, Raymond Weinstein with 6.5, and, and Arthur Bisgaya, Samuel Reshevsky, and James Sherwin with 6. Zone 5 was allotted three players, but the lack of true chess professionals in America aside from Fisher greatly affected the players the U.S. sent to the interzonal. Lombardy was too busy to play as he was in seminary, and Weinstein was also busy with college studies. Reshevsky declined a spot in the interzonal, and Sherwin could not get enough time off work to participate. Fisher and Bisgaya won the first two spots, and Pal Benko was nominated to fill the final position. <laughs> Zone 6 Canada. Daniel Yanofsky, a former Canadian champion and British champion was nominated for the one qualifying spot allotted. <laughs> Zone 7 Central America Zone 7 comprised Central America along with northern parts of South America. Miguel Cuillar Colombia qualified from the Caracas zonal. Topic: <laughs> Zone 8 South America. Top finishers at the Sao Paulo zonal were Julio Bolbochorn Argentina first with 13 and a half 17 Samuel Schweber Argentina second with 13 and Eugenio German Brazil Rodrigo Flores Chile and Bernardo Wexler tied for third with 11 and a half 
After a playoff for third place, the qualifiers were Bolbo Chorn, Schweber, and German. Topic Zone Nine Asia. Zone Nine included Asia, except USSR, and the Pacific, and was divided into two subzones. The Southeast Asia and Pacific subzone tournament was held in Sydney, with CJS Purdy winning. As the West and Central Asia subzone tournament at Madras had only two players, it was decided in match play. Manuel Aaron India beat Suki and Momo Mongolia 3 to 1. Aaron qualified by beating Purdy 3 to 0 in the zonal final match also held at Madras. Topic: Interzonal The fifth interzonal was planned for the Netherlands in 1961, but the sponsors could not guarantee that visas could be obtained for all participants. Subsequently efforts were made to play in Moscow, and then Madrid, but these arrangements also fell through. Finally the Interzonal was played in Stockholm under the direct sponsorship of FIDE, from 26 January to 8 March 1962. The 23-player single round robin tournament was won convincingly by 18-year-old American Bobby Fischer with 17.5 points out of 22 13 wins. Nine draws, no losses, a margin of two and a half points. The next four places were taken by the Soviets Tigran Petrosian and EFIM Geller with 15 points, and the Soviet Viktor Korchnoi and Miroslav Filip of Czechoslovakia with 14 points. For the sixth and final qualifying spot there was a three-way tie at 13 and a half points. Leonid Stein USSR, Pal Benko USA, and Svetozar Gligoric Yugoslavia played a double round robin playoff tournament which was dominated by Stein and Benko. Although Stein won, a rule adopted in 1959 allowed no more than three players from a single federation to qualify from the interzonal. Stein could play in the candidates only if one of the other qualifiers from the USSR Geller, Petrosian, or Korchnoi was unable to participate. With Stein excluded, Benko took the final place in the candidates tournament. Topic: <laughs> Crossdoubles. Players in bold advanced to the candidates tournament along with seeded players Mikhail Tal and Paul Kerries. Topic: Candidates Tournament. The Candidates Tournament was played as an eight-player quadruple round robin tournament in Curaçao in 1962. The field was largely the same as at the 1959 Candidates Tournament in Yugoslavia, with Mikhail Tal USSR, Paul Kerries USSR, Tigran Petrosian USSR, Bobby Fischer USA, and Pal Benko USA as the five returning players. The three new players were EFIM Geller, USSR, Miroslav Filip, Czechoslovakia, and Viktor Korchnoi, USSR, in place of former champion Vasily Smyslov, USSR, Svetozar Gligoric, Yugoslavia, and Fririk Olafsson, Iceland. 
Only Korchnoi was really new to this level of competition, as Geller was a candidate at Zurich in 1953 and Philipp at Amsterdam in 1956. Pre-tournament predictions The favourites were Tal the recently dethroned world champion, and Fischer, based on his powerful interzonal showing. Botvinnik also picked Tal, as did a poll of Russian readers, narrowly ahead of Fischer. Former world champion Max Uwe picked Petrosian. Kerries said Fischer deserved to be favorite but had faith that a Soviet player would win, and similarly Alexander Kotov and Svetozar Gligoric thought one of the Soviets would win ahead of Fischer. American magazine Chess Life picked Fischer ahead of Tal. Of the others it said, Petrosian had a reputation of drawing many games, and it was unclear if his tendency to split points might prevent him from reaching the championship. Kerry's at age 46 was the oldest player, and it was thought by some that this might be his last shot at the championship title. Korchnoi and Geller had very imaginative and adventurous styles, which often got him into trouble and led to erratic results. Philip had been ill and had not played many major events between 1958 and 1960, and had the reputation as a solid player who scored many draws, and Benko was not a full-time professional chess player he worked as an investment broker in New York which limited his opportunities to play against grandmaster strength opposition, and he had a tendency to get into time trouble. Topic. Results The pre-tournament favorites were Tal and Fischer, but Tal lost his first three games and Fischer lost his first two games, indicating an unpredictable tournament could be unfolding. Tal was in bad health, withdrew after the third of four cycles, and was hospitalized with kidney problems. Korchnoi took the early lead, scoring five sevenths in the first cycle, ahead of Petrosian, Geller, and Kerries with four points. But in the twelfth round, Korchnoi blundered against Fischer in a winning position and lost, and soon after lost four games in a row. The tournament became a three way race between Petrosian, Kerries, and Geller. With two rounds to go Petrosian and Kerries shared the lead, but Kerries unexpectedly lost in the penultimate round to Benko. Petrosian, who drew his last five games of the tournament, emerged as the winner. Petrosian scored 17 and a half points out of 27, half a point ahead of Kerries and Geller. Fischer finished fourth with 14 points, followed by Korchnoi 13 and a half, Benko 12, Philip 7 and Tal 7 from 21 games played. Since the championship rules provided an automatic berth into the next cycle's candidates tournament to the candidates runner-up, Kerries and Geller played a match to determine second place. Kerries won the 1962 Moscow playoff match four and a half to three and a half to earn a seed into the 1965 candidates. However, Geller ended up also being seeded into the 1965 candidates anyway after Botvinnik declined to participate. Topic. Allegations of collusion What makes this tournament famous and often discussed is the allegations of Soviet collusion. 
The three top finishers Petrosian, Geller and Kerries drew all 12 of their games against each other, in an average of only 19 moves. Soon after the tournament, Fischer publicly alleged that the Soviets had colluded to prevent any non Soviet, specifically him, from winning. His allegations were twofold, first, that Petrosian, Geller and Kerries had pre-arranged to draw all their games, and second, that Korchnoi had been part of the drawing pact in the first half of the tournament, and been instructed to lose some games to them in the second half. In the first two cycles Korchnoi drew all his games with Petrosian, Geller and Kerries, in the third cycle he lost to all of them, and in the final cycle he lost to Petrosian but drew with Kerries and Geller. The first allegation, of the drawing pact, is generally assumed to be correct. All of the three players involved have since died, but Yuri Averbak, who was head of the Soviet team, confirmed it in a 2002 interview. He offered the rationale that Kerry's was the oldest competitor and wanted to conserve energy, and that Petrosian and Geller were good friends with a history of drawing with each other. The second allegation, of Korchnoi throwing games, is more doubtful. Korchnoi defected from the USSR in 1976, and has never alleged he was forced to throw games. Dominic Lawson calls the allegation, "...preposterous." Noting that the main beneficiary of Korchnoi's losses was Petrosian, whom Korchnoi detested. Korchnoi has also written on his surprise at the short draws. This was perhaps the only time when the Soviet authorities did not intervene to determine any competition among the Soviets. On this occasion it was Petrosian personally who set up this controversy and he was helped by his friend, Geller. Kerry's was a wise man, but he was not cunning, he took the bait, while he could have refrained. The three players had privately agreed that they would draw all their games with each other. Tal and I were not included in this scheme. But in the end they colluded against Kerry's. There are also allegations that, in the ultimately decisive Benko Kerry's game in the penultimate round, which Benko won, Petrosian and Geller, who were good friends, conspired against Kerry's by offering to help Benko. Benko has written that Petrosian and Geller offered to help analyze the adjourned position, but that he refused the offer. Topic. Response to allegations FIDE, the World Chess Federation, responded to the allegations by changing the format of future candidates' tournaments. Beginning in the next 1966 cycle, the round-robin format was replaced by a series of elimination matches initially best of 10 quarterfinals, best of 10 semifinals, then a best of 12 final, to eliminate the possibility of collusion which exists in a round-robin tournament. Championship match As the winner of the candidates, Petrosian challenged Botvinnik for the World Championship. The match was best of 24, with Botvinnik to retain the title in the event of a 12-12 tie. Petrosian lost the first game of the match, played on March 23, 1963, but recovered and won fairly comfortably, 12 and a half to 9 and a half. Petrosian won five games, Botvinnik won two games, and there were 15 draws. 
The final game, played on May 20, 1963, ended as a draw, giving Petrosian the required 12 and a half points needed to win the match. Topic: <laughs> Aftermath The championship rules had been changed so that, unlike in 1957 and 1960, the defending champion was not entitled to a rematch. As the loser of championship match, Botvinnik was still an automatic seed in the next candidates tournament. However, Botvinnik chose not to exercise this right and retired from championship play, although not from competitive chess altogether. Petrosian went on to successfully defend his title in 1966, before losing the title to Boris Spassky in 1969. 